All right. You sound really Hopefully. clear right now. Okay, it's clear now? Mm hmm Okay, cool. Let's hope that that fixed it and we'll just move forward. Um, okay. Yeah, I was shocked that I had never actually heard any of your music because uh, just coming from similar backgrounds and things like mm -hmm. that, your music would have definitely been something that my parents would have been looking for, <laughs> and my, my grandma and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we had DC Talk and Newsboys and all oh, of wow. the, you know, Grits. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you knew Grits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I just did an interview with uh, the manager of Grits a couple of days oh. ago. Okay, so uh, cool. we very hadn't cool. talked since the late nineties, maybe. That might have uh, been um, dude with the cap on, big dude. Um, might have been one that I saw. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. His name is Dirk. Nah, Dirk I, don't Brown. Think so. I don't think okay. that might not have been the one I saw. But I, I've seen a lot of them, so they kind of start to run together, you know. But yeah. uh, uh, but I just wanted to kind of familiarize myself with your journey and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, my channel primarily deals with. Um, things to do with mental health. Um, mm. uh, hypnosis is something that I do for uh, mm. improving lives, counseling services. It's something that I've kind of found came pretty naturally after mm. uh, being a, uh, an evangelist and a faith healer. Uh, mm. it, was, it was an easy transition to slide <laughs> wow. into using the same modalities in hypnosis. And uh, the crossover is just eerie. Uh, but wow. yeah, yeah. And, and definitely with the priming with, with music and different things mm. like that, you know, with services and, uh, just knowing how all, all of that flows in your cadence, right. your tonality and, and different, you know, just little subtle things to, to mm. be able to influence. And I, and I, I'm very careful with the way that I, I talk about hypnosis because it's not like you take control of another person's mind. There's nothing right. going on like that. It's really subtle, subconscious, social things that, most mm. people don't pick up on that. Oh, you know, someone like me who's neurodivergent growing up mm. in the church, I picked up on those things just naturally watching my father preach and, and wow. things like that. And so, uh, you know, just kind of piecing those things together. I've started talking to people who use the same modalities in their profession, whether it be a uh, mixed martial artist, kickboxers, mm. uh, whether it be somebody who, you know, uses it for uh, setting mental states before they, you know, go on stage, before they talk, communicate everything mm. like that. So I, we talk a lot about visualization tools, techniques, mental, okay. your mental health. And that's kind of what I do on my channel. Mm. But I recently uh, had a, uh, a, a friend of mine who attended the same Bible school I attended. And I know you went to seminary. I went to Bible school. These, th these two are, couldn't be further apart from one another. Um, I it, did Bible it, college and then seminary. So I had, okay, I had okay. a double so you dose. Know, you know that there's yeah. a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, the, ca the, the cabin between those two is just mm -hmm. amazing. But, um, but he also has, uh, has deconstructed and wow. um, still a great guy. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome dude. Um, but recently I interviewed him as well, just because he had gone through the same experience or, or a similar journey um, mm -hmm. as I have and, and as you have. Yeah. And uh, so kind of, I, you know, it got me interested in wanting to hear more voices of people mm. who have, I don't know how you phrase it, but I, I, I lost my faith. I, I mean, okay. I, like it, it almost like just went away. Like one day mm -hmm. I, it was just not there anymore. Mm. Uh, and it was, it was a process. I remember the moment when I realized it, but mm. I don't remember it happening and I don't, and I never desired it. It wasn't something that I sought after. Mm. So um, it's just been interesting. I've been wanting to hear other people's stories and just kind of how, how, that Oh, journey. so the link that you sent me, that was the one that you're referring to. Yes, sir. And that was the first one like that you've done on your channel. You don't that really is the do. First one. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know and that. It was okay. kind of my coming out. A lot of people, a lot of people knew, but okay. I had never really come out out and just hmm. said, Hey, I am an atheist, you know, hmm. um, and said that, said the A word. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, here's the thing. I went through a pretty public and nasty divorce about three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we deconstructed at the same time, my ex-wife and I, uh, mm -hmm. it, around the same time. She did before I did, or at least she mm -hmm. was able to say it publicly and what, I kind of owned it before I did. Mm -hmm. And um, so she went public, like on social mm. media and everything. And so I think a lot of people kind of, <laughs> like she kind of set the stage for me to, right. you know, to kind of come out. And and so it just, it, it wasn't a big deal for me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I think it, it has been a big deal, uh, especially for you, uh, 
Um, and, and I know that you have faced some severe backlash. I've seen some, I mean, a lot of your former <laughs> friends, things like that have made videos yeah. about you, uh, you know, their comments, posts, different things. And I would like to know, uh, how you're handling that, you know, with, mm. you know, make sure that you've got a good circle around you. That's, that's, you know, got your back and let you know that you're cared for and, and that mm -hmm. people do respect you and, and are listening to your message. So uh, yeah. I just want to kind of check, check on that, but, um, <laughs> but also, so, you know, cause people care, people mm -hmm. want to know how, you, how you're doing and, and things like that. So yeah, yeah just kind of want to hear your story and, and wherever mm -hmm. you want to pick up, let, let people know who you are, your, your, where, where you came through the church and different things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, well, appreciate the opportunity to uh, to tell the story. Uh, I think it's an interesting one in light of the fact that we are in a nation that is, even as we speak, uh, fighting cultural wars. And a lot of those cultural wars are based in uh, sort of this Judeo-Christian Judeo -Christian traditional value system. Um, yeah. And people are trying to, right now, figure out how much of what they're fighting for is, is faith and how much they're fighting for is these are just my personal traditional values. And then those two get wedded together. So um, people ask me all the time, okay, Brady, you don't believe anymore. Why are you trying to take this away from other people? Just let them believe what's the harm in it. And then I'll point to, you know, January 6th, you yeah. know, people waving American flags and Christian flags and charging the Capitol with them. So yeah. uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think the story is important. I grew up in two places, I grew up in the streets of Philadelphia, but I also grew up in the church on the weekend. And it was almost like never the twain shall meet. I had two separate lives. But then at some point, um, like many people who grew up in the church in the 80s and 90s, at some point you have what you believe is an encounter with the God that you've sort of been skirting this whole time. You've been going to his house on the weekends uh, like grandma. And then one day grandma would sit you down and have a talk with you. And you're like, oh, grandma, you're a real person. And you, I'm going to spend more time with you, grandma. If you could kind of imagine something like that with the God of the Bible, you're going to this house, this, this church every weekend. And at some point you open the book or something is said or a song. You have some kind of experience that you believe is an encounter with the person whose house you've been coming to for years. And for me, it was reading a verse in the Bible that just painted God as outlasting, everlasting, just being from, you know, from eternity to eternity. And it just boggled my mind that that anyone could not have a beginning. And so I just started thinking about this concept of eternality and this being who claimed to rule that facet of existence mm. um, and house all other facets of existence. And so... I started these, really these concepts. I, I mm -hmm. think uh, one of the, the the things you're touching on the infinity, eternity, these concepts that I I, I don't think that that believers think about them too deeply. Mm -hmm. I, I I think you know it's like well yeah he's eternal. Mm -hmm. I mean what's your what's your problem? Yeah he, he's forever. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't mm -hmm. have a beginning. And mm -hmm. and it's just uh, like it, we get these quick answers, you know, mm -hmm. and we get them from the time we're children. Uh, yeah. These these quick quick answers that you you have. That mm -hmm. are just like they, they work as gotchas, but because mm -hmm. we're given them to us at such a young age, it's almost like taking, uh, you know, a spherical or a globular earth for granted. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I remember the first time a flat earther was like, well, can you prove it? And I, and I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> no, you know, I kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of froze and now I can and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. happy that I, I can. But <laughs> I was but a little scared just now, like, wait, are you a flat earther? Flat yeah, no, 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 no. But I did. I did have this right. moment where I mm -hmm. knew they were wrong. I knew mm -hmm. I knew it. You know, I knew there's mm -hmm. not it's not a flat earth, but I didn't I couldn't demonstrate it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes, I think even with just like this, a verse, uh, you know, these theological concepts, the depth of them and the mm -hmm. gravity of what they mean, if you take them seriously. Yeah. And you really tease that thought out, the, you know, mm. the reductio ad absurdum. Like, like, let's take it all the way down. Mm. Let's 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 really look yeah. at it. What would that mean? What what yeah. would that? Uh, what, how, how would you have to perceive this individual if it had no beginning? If you really took it seriously, mm. and I don't think we do. I don't think I don't yeah. think believers really do because when well, they I tried to about this verse, yeah, you know, it's like well, I yeah. tried to take it seriously, but it didn't lead to reductio ad absurdum. It led okay. to reductio. Mysterion, like I just was. Mm. There's a mystery here, 
Yeah. And apparently this mystery makes sense in God's ontology, which there is a sense in which you, I could get, I could still get there. This yeah. being who is other, yeah. right? Who needs no beginning. He has existence yeah. in himself because even to this day, even though I, I struggle with calling myself an atheist because I believe there must be some cause for our reality. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there is a, uh, what they call the, um, 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 what is it? Well, no, not, not the prime mover, but just the idea okay. of this, um, I forget the term for it, but what you end up with, um, when you have this, this succession infinite of regress. infinite regress, right. Um, I don't, I can't get my mind to an infinite regress. I'm like, at some point mm. there's something, mm. I don't know what the nature of that thing is. I don't know that that thing is personal. I don't know that that thing mm. is, I don't think the thing even has to be all powerful. It just has to be powerful enough to produce what we see. So it'd be well, more like Spinoza or Einstein's uh, deistic uh, prime mover type of thing, or not type even of that thing, or, or or maybe just on another plane of reality. The, okay, the, sure. the, the idea of causality doesn't make as much yeah. sense as it does in our plane. And and it, when you tease these things out, you can come up with a lot of things like simulation theory, and, right? And exactly, different things I'm, like that, and and. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, I've kind of you know sat with these things, and mm -hmm. at this point, I I can't I can't see any reason. No, uh, I don't see the necessity behind, um, like like you said, different states or mm -hmm. a different type of reality. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it makes sense in a way of like it, it it was something always exists and it always has and it always mm -hmm. will. But the state that it exists in right, right. is in in a constant flex, flux. And you get into thing. this idea, uh, you know, just this: uh, we could be the consciousness. Was that Sagan? We are the yeah. way the universe, you know, becomes conscious of itself. Yeah. There's all kind of ideas yeah. that I'm open to. Sure. But I think any idea, any any concept of praise and worship, is going to be misdirected at this point because we have yeah, no idea. yeah. It almost seems like if if whatever it is you're talking about, what would be the point in praise and worship? Right. And what, and what would want it if it deserved it? What what would desire it? And how would we know? Especially if we get to the point That's where we have to say one, that right? revelation is untrustworthy. When, once we get yeah. there, yeah. worship goes out the window because yeah. for all we know, this could be a simulation. This could be sure. a galactic playground. Sure. <laughs> yeah. For some other existence. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we can't. That's like the problem of heart right. solipsism. Once you get there, it's like, yeah, right. I can't, I can't demonstrate that. You know, right. absolute truth. I can't demonstrate it. Absolute right. knowledge, I can't demonstrate. You know, we get to these certain things, but I think that's kind of where I'm I'm hung up and stuck on the whole um infinite regress and, and mm -hmm. the origin of reality as we currently experience it, is I just don't see the need for it. Mm -hmm. I, I you know, I just don't I don't I when right. one I want to rewind the clock back, mm -hmm. you know, to what right yeah. now the Big Bang, you know, or what we as currently accepted as modern cosmology. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if, if you ask me what was going on ten seconds before that moment, mm. I, I really don't know. Yeah, and I don't necessarily need it that cause to to right. to be it, anything that I could even explain because our math breaks down. I, our models right. the idea of I before the big know. bang they're saying before yeah. the big bang doesn't even make sense because time starts there and and i don't know is okay just like just like when you get to the problem of hard solipsism and you can't go any further when you can't go any further i don't know it and right. and just that's it that's the best we can do and here's okay. why I, here's why i take it from there the fact that we could even make statements like you just said like yo we can't go past this and i don't know any idea of a god or gods any idea yeah. of that to me runs into a brick wall if those gods or a god would lead us to the point where we have to say we don't know. Sure. Apparently, we were not meant to know because if we were meant to sure. know, we would know. Like, I remember I, even as have a, some mechanism, some tool, something. Right. Something right. That, that and maybe we'll get there in 500,000 years. And at that go. point, let's have that conversation. But if we're not Absolutely. there now, Absolutely. why pretend that we are? And I remember being yeah. in church, even as a child, mm. before I quote unquote came to faith. Sure. I remember sitting in church. It was a big church, about 2000 members. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I would sit and I would look around. I'm talking about eight, nine years old. I would say, there's a lot of people in here. And then my immediate next thought was, but there's a lot of people that don't go to church. Mm. What do they believe? 
Mm. And how come mm. we're here, but they're, they're somewhere else? Mm. Just the idea that a God would lead us to this kind of confusion yeah. is untenable to me. So, mm. and so that, that leads me to say, I think a God must be the wrong category. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't, maybe we haven't come up with the right category yet. Yeah. It's interesting because I, you know, when I think about it and I look back over my past, I remember the uh, question that I asked my father was concerning free will. And, mm. and I, mm. I must've been t- 10 to 12, somewhere around in there. Mm-hmm. But, um, his answer just floored me. Mm. And it, it, I mean, I accepted it, you know, because mm. he was like the authority on the scripture and, you know, how to interpret it and different things, but it just didn't sit with me. Mm. And even today, when I have conversations about free will, I, I honestly, unless somebody defines what the hell they're talking about, I don't mm. know. I, I'm just like, I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean when you mention free will. <laughs> Um, just because of the level of determined things, right? Uh, I just I'm kind of like, look, I think we have the uh, the freest will that we can have, you know, like Dan Dennett says, you know, I, but I, you know, free, I don't think so. Was well, it Hitchens that says, uh, of course I have free will, I have no choice but to. Yeah, 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 yeah. and 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 I, at least I know I'm being ironic when I say that, right? You know, um, yeah, and and that you know, it's kind of the case is that we have no choice but to operate that, but you know, yeah. I think the more and more we discover about the the brain and and mm. things like. I think the less and less will actually have this this pocket yeah. of free will. Yeah. Um, but his answer, you know, it mm-hmm. just didn't it didn't comport with a good answer. You know, it was just one of those things that was like, yeah, God knows everything. And I was like, well, if he knows everything, how can I do anything different than what he knows right. I'm going to right. do? Can I do anything At different? 10 to 12, you asked that question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. But but I mean, I we dad, we were big in the Bible. I mean, I, okay. I went to I went to bed with like uh, stories of Elisha and Elijah uh, playing on the, on the, on a tape recorder and different things like that. I mean, it raise was, up your child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, it. James, you've made the scriptures a liar. You've departed <laughs> so from far, it. so far, but I'm still <laughs> okay. alive. So right, they can, exactly. you know, fingers crossed, they can still hold on to it. And here's so look, the, yeah, go ahead. Who's to say, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. you know, I'm still open. And, um, and here's the thing. I'm actually, I did go through that phase where, you know, if if the God of the Bible is mm-hmm. real and, mm-hmm. and and this story and this whole and the gospel message is true, I went through that stage of like, screw mm. him. I'm not following him. He's a monster. Mm. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And then the more I thought about that, and I thought about the eternity of hell. Mm. I'm like, I'm, I, if I found out that it were true and mm. it absolutely is true and it were demonstrated to me, I'd be like, look. I'm going to go along to get along. Hell for eternity sounds awful. I mean, Mm -hmm. if now if I believed in annihilation Mm -hmm. and I'm just annihilated, I'm cool with that. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, I just cease to exist. But you talk about infinite torture, like forever. I can't imagine wrapping my head around how anybody would willingly accept that. So you gave you you would give your spiritual lunch money to the cosmic bully. I don't think I'd have a choice. I think I'd have to. I think I'd have to. I, I just mm-hmm. wouldn't have a choice. And I'm not saying might is right. I'm just mm-hmm. saying I wouldn't have a choice. I, I just, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that the uh, the Jews at Auschwitz wanted, you know, or were willingly there. They mm-hmm. just they didn't have a choice. And mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't stop me from believing he's a moral monster. But yeah. I just don't think I'd have a choice. I just right. I, yeah. I'd be compelled to believe. And I'd go along to get along. And that just be how it was. And if a God would be cool with that and wants me, fine. But I mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be happy to be there. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, so going back to 15-year-old me, yeah, I take in this concept of eternality and the yeah. being who who uh, exhibits it or, or who epitomizes it. And sure. I just become a worshiper of God. Mm. I think at that point, the gospel is be good or you'll go to hell. Okay. I thought Jesus was somewhere in the mix of the cross, but I didn't understand right. what his merit versus my being good. I didn't understand that, how that worked out. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I was trying to both believe in Jesus so I wouldn't go to hell and be good so I wouldn't go to hell. Mm-hmm. And so stop cursing, stop failing in school, stop disrespecting my parents, stop sleeping around with girls, stop fighting, stop. I just became the goodest, the, the best person I could be. Around 15. Around 15. Um, I even started doing Christian rap, but in the process of that, I met some other guys who were doing Christian rap and they had a much firmer handle on the gospel. 
they and I started their going doctrines and yeah, theology, yeah, and right? Like that. So I started going to their concerts, sitting in the crowd, and they were basically evangelizing me from the stage, even though we were, you know, becoming best friends and rapping together. I still was like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't get that part of it. And so it was through their ministry, really, that I, I got the gospel and believed. Gotcha. And I would have said prior to 2014, you know, I came to faith and uh, I met the God of the Bible. I met Jesus at the foot of the cross and my sins were washed away. My heart was renewed and I, my soul was, my spirit was regenerated. I was born again. All of that good stuff. Was this the and that was the first time you had had that experience? Yep. Okay. This is around right. 16, 17, somewhere in there. Gotcha. Um, yep. Got a hold of the gospel, believed it, lived it out, made that my life's work. You know, so yep. I, I just didn't go to college when I graduated high school. We started a a nonprofit organization, a record label, and a rap group. And oh wow! The cross the cross movement was the banner that we hung over all those different organizations. Sure. And we just traveled the country, traveled the world, just blending our faith and our culture and showing people what a marvelous blend. I used to call it a fabulous fab fabric blend, faith and culture together. And um I did that for about 30 years. Um, planned my 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 whole life around how can I get better at telling this message and discipling people in following this this God. Um to the point where I ended up going to Bible college eventually and then seminary because I, when I was morphing from a career as a rapper to a career as an educator, I, I, I developed an entire course called Hip Hop and Ethics, where I was taking hip hop history, using it to teach lessons on sociology and ethics. But really, that was just my covert way of sneaking, of sneaking um, evangelism into secular schools. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I was planning to do that with the rest of my life. And I, I was being successful at it. Sure. And um, in the process of that, I said, okay, I need a master's degree at least. I already had my bachelor's, but I need a master's. And I want the original languages. I want Hebrew and Greek um, in case I run into the academic challenge to my faith instead of just the, the street level knowledge uh, uh, challenge to my faith. I was used to contending with that. And I had some some book knowledge in terms of you know just how to do apologetics and world religions and but I said no nah, I want I want seminary level training. So I went to Westminster Theological Seminary, which is sort of like the Harvard of seminaries in uh, this country. If you are uh, sort of evangelical fundamentalist, so I go there. Twenty eleven, I believe I enrolled. Somewhere around 2013, 2014, hit a snag where um, I just started noticing or feeling like I was being trained. You know, the Bible says, always have an, always be ready to give an answer for the faith that you have, which is cool. That's apologetics, right? Always be ready to make an apology. It's a legal term to defend your faith. But I said, this doesn't seem like I'm just defending the faith. This sounds like I'm... It sounds like I'm a, I'm being trained to sort of be a spin doctor here. Because oh, there's I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like there's all these always being able to justify your position. Yeah. And yeah, it's crafty, man. And justifying your position against valid issues. Like that's Criticism, a valid yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Why do we always have to have an answer? Why can't we just say us? Oh, that's a good one? We don't we don't yeah, really know. Yeah. No, yeah. we've always got to have an answer. Right. And I said, some of these answers just don't, they don't jive. And I don't feel good about going out telling this to people. Yeah. Right. And so that was kind of like the first crack. What What do you, do you remember one of the first issues that you had? Uh, one of them was how the New Testament authors use the Old Testament. So they might say, Jesus <coughs> did this, or Jesus said this, so that the scripture might be fulfilled that says da 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 and, and why was that why. problematic? Well, because when you go back and look at what those scriptures actually said in context, you're like, that's not talking about that. Like that's <laughs> that's not a prophecy. And even yeah. even if it was, this happening does not fulfill that. Like that's it's so random and so arbitrary. 
Yeah. It just looks like you're proof texting and like you're just quote mining. Yeah. Right. But then it, it came with, and here's why we can't do that today, but the New Testament authors could do that. Like we would be in error if we tried to do that with the Old Testament, but they could do it because they had mm. the Holy Spirit and they would. That's I just remember sitting there like, oh, and it was it was contrasted to the way Jewish rabbis, if you ever read like Mishnah or Pesher literature from the Jewish rabbis, the way that they just go into the Old Testament and just pull stuff all out of context and make it mm -hmm. mean whatever they needed to mean in the moment. Yeah. And they said, this is not what the New Testament authors are doing. And I remember just sitting right. there like, but it looks it looks so similar. Like how, <laughs> yeah. what makes you say this is not what they're doing? Right. If this is what the rabbis were doing at the time. Right. Like what other than your pre-commitment to this being divine revelation would push you in the direction that there's a difference here. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I just couldn't buy it. Right. I couldn't buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I too notice that. And, and sometimes I actually have to be careful. Uh, I can, I, if I, am too if i walk into a situation or a subject already committed to a position i can mm. just about spend information to make it fit yeah anything i want it to and that yeah. came from my my training and education in religion and and in wow. doctrine How about and that? and and it is How it's one of those that? things and when i see attorneys on television bragging that if they talk long enough they can make anything the truth i sit there and look and i'm like yeah yeah i get it i i mean you can with scripture, if yeah. you want to make a position correct and true, you can do it. You can find a way to do it. You can just and that's it. that's perfect because that sort of speaks to my deconversion process. Yeah. Like because I had gotten so good at playing devil's advocate, yep. it was almost like, hey, the devil's got a point. <laughs> like, <laughs> like not yeah. that there's a real yeah. devil, but just the other yeah. side of the argument is yeah. like that's a good point. Right. Yeah. Um, and so when and, and when there's the not just one other side of the argument, unfortunately, exactly. is exactly. that I'm, I remember these false dichotomies were presented to me all the time that it's either this belief in Jesus Christ mm. and your faith or mm. the devil and hell, like whatever <laughs> the other options are. Right. <laughs> whatever, whatever anybody else's system is, mm. that is damnation, destruction. That's hell. That that is not correct. What yeah, we're teaching yeah. you, what you've been indoctrinated with. I don't ever remember getting saved because I don't ever remember a time when I wasn't. I, mm. I mean, I I was praying for people in 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 the hospital beds at three years old in a three piece suit carrying a Bible. I mean, I was conditioned, I was trained. Mm. So I, I mean, if wow. if people ever if if that is a criticism that people have about my story, they're absolutely one hundred percent correct. <laughs> I can't I can't say that they're not. Right. I don't remember not believing it. Mm. So yeah, I didn't have yeah. them. For I hear you. I hear you. Now, but I, I'm I'm certain you probably had times as you grew in your faith that you owned it. Like where you where you 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 knew I that believed this it. What you believed right. I Got believed you. it. I flat yeah. believed it. And and whenever I laid hands on the sick, I mm -hmm. genuinely believed that I had the anointing of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the power of God, and mm -hmm. that whenever I was touching them, there was no difference between Jesus mm -hmm. Christ laying hands on them mm -hmm. and me me laying hands on them. I genuinely mm -hmm. believed it. And I did see things that were confirmation in the moment. In mm -hmm. hindsight, I know what those things <laughs> were and how we do those things. Yeah, adrenaline yeah. and the placebo yeah. effect, and um, mm. and now I I know, and, and I'm embarrassed. Wow. I'm embarrassed wow. about wow. some of the things, you know. Um, uh, wow. I look back on it and it hurts. You know, it just kind of like oh, mm. that cringe feeling is just like, man, mm. if I had that time back, or if I could talk to that person right now and apologize, I you know I would, but. Yeah, you know, you well, can't go back and, and undo everything. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. Maybe it. this yep. is in a small way our our you know act our of penance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> People ask me all the time, "Why are you so vocal?" I'm like, yeah. I feel like I owe y'all. I spent yeah. 30 years telling you guys one thing. So yeah. adamant. I all my creative energy went into producing the apologist that you are today. Yeah, I feel like I owe it to you. To, and. and and how how many times when you were preaching and you were a Christian did you ever hear why can't mm. you just keep it to yourself like you know like <laughs> why 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 are you preaching out here why like 
the opposite never gets, yeah. you never hear, yeah. why, why do you have to share your faith? Why do you have to yeah. talk about that? But if yeah. you, if you ever say, I don't really believe that immediately, it's like, well, why are you attacking my faith? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. The good Christian is a vocal one. The yeah. good atheist is a quiet one. That's, the, that's right. That's the double right. standard. Yeah. yeah. And I am happy oh. to see that people like you uh, and, you know, more public figures are, are, okay with being open about the struggle with faith and and accepting mm. the label that's not important but discussing mm. the issues yeah. and being honest and open about them that is that is yeah. important and so i'm i'm really excited you know to be a part of that so yeah appreciate yeah. that yeah so the the sticking point for me was i think uh third year second year maybe in seminary i read a book from a former professor of the school and this former professor was talking as if evolution was was true. Oh, sure. And he went as far as to say, because there's a verse in the Bible that says, that explains how the world got as effed up as it is. Sure. Through one man, talking about Adam, through one man, sin came into the world, and through sin, death, and death right. spread to all men. So this, this former professor from Westminster, he says evolution is true. And... Because of that, Adam and Eve cannot be historical figures. Gotcha. Therefore, the Apostle Paul is wrong in the New Testament when he says through one man, sin came into the world and sin spread to all men and through sin, death. He says, but even though Paul was wrong about that whole process, we still need the gospel because death is still a reality and sin is still a reality. Mm. And I just remember sitting there saying, that's not how that works. Like if you take away the word gospel means good news, right? Yep. Yep. But you don't have good news without bad news. The bad news is we fell into sin in the garden of Eden. Right. If you take the fall away, if you take away the bad news, then you don't need the good news. Right. And I just remember sitting there saying, if there's a naturalistic explanation for origins, there's probably a naturalistic explanation for what we're calling sin. Gotcha. Gotcha. So okay. you're still trying to feed me a spiritual solution for what probably is a natural problem. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And just that, the inability to connect that dot anymore. I didn't believe Peter Ann's about evolution. I thought he was wrong. But oh, I just okay. thought his logic was off. Yeah. You can't take away Genesis and still tell me I need Jesus. Mm. So I, I rebuttaled him. I refuted him. I wrote a whole paper tearing him to shreds. Yeah. But that stuck with me. I said, wait, sure. but what if he's right? Like, what if let me just see. Let, let me just use that interpretive model. Yeah. yeah. Let's say something else was true. What would I find in the Bible if there was some other explanation for human origins? Okay. So if that was the case, well, then I would find contradictions. I would find things that we just know can't be true. I would find inconsistencies. I would find. I said, well, wait, we, we have those things. Like, yeah. you can't get off page one of the Bible without finding there's no dome in the sky separating waters from waters. There's no, you had a light before the sun. Like what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I said, wait, all the things that you would find if something else was true is staring at you on every page of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh shit. Yeah. That this changes probably, things. This probably is not true. And in an instant, in an instant, it all crumbled. Mm. This is probably not true. And mm. it made perfect sense that it would not be true. Gotcha. And it scared the daylights out of me. Gotcha. And I spent the next I spent the next five years basically lying to myself, denying that I had that experience. But oh, okay. Okay. slowly, bit by bit, I depression set in, all kinds of just, you know, the doubt grew. Mm. I, I see you formulating the question there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask. Uh, so were you a young earth creationist then? I wasn't young earth creationist. Okay. Okay. I didn't care enough about young earth versus old. Okay. Earth. Okay. I, I just, I've, I've very rarely met somebody um, that the evolution thing did it for them. Uh, I, and, and I know that it, I, for, as hard as Kim, Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis fights against mm -hmm. uh, contemporary cosmology and evolution and, and different things like that. I mean, I know it has to be a, a sticking point that this is an issue mm -hmm. for more than just you. I, I, this has to be an issue, but, um, but yeah, I, that's interesting because you're, you're the first person I've actually heard mm. that it, well, it, that, that was the thing. Cause well, see, I was an evangelist. 
Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As an evangelist, you yeah. can't get to mm. you can't get to Romans five mm. without a historical Adam being the father of mm. humanity. And, and did, did you ever hear the gap theory? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. heard the gap theory, and, but and that didn't that didn't do it for you if you if you no could because roll back even the in clock. the gap theory you still have yeah. an Adam at some point who's mm. the father of everyone living today. Yes. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once yeah. you, and you, you once couldn't you, get there. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Once you, I got you. Like, yeah, theory would not have would not have messed up what I'm talking okay. about. Gotcha. It's the gotcha. okay. it's the the population genetics that says we cannot have come from just two human beings. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So yes, like that invalidates I, the whole idea gotcha. of sin coming into gotcha. the world through one person. See, we didn't understand evolution, but mm. my dad accepted it. My dad, okay. my dad accepted that. Uh, ah, I think it was I get Francis it. Collins. Francis Collins yep. accepting yep. it was yep. good enough for my dad. Yeah. So okay. we accepted an old earth. We accepted evolution. We accepted all mm -hmm. these things. So for me, none of that stuff was even a sticking point because I didn't understand evolution. Like, mm. like what you say, the, the DNA mm -hmm. there, uh, you can't believe in an Adam and Eve. You, right. you can't whenever you understand evolution, when you really get down to the DNA level. Right. Uh, then it, it all falls apart, right. which is what, what you're saying, which is absolutely correct. And, and there are ways and, you could do it. You can make Adam and Eve just the representatives yes, of the entire like, like population. It's, an, it's a story. It's an allegory of what, yeah. Or not even right. an allegory. Like it could be real and you could just mm. say God chose two people and made them the representative that was the of order. humanity. Yeah, got it. And got so, it. but what it doesn't explain though is, okay, how does their There was sin, already death. There was, yeah. right, there's, one is already death. Yeah. How does their sin spread to the entire population? And, yep. Yep. but that's not what Genesis says. Genesis says God made the first man from the dust of the ground. Right. Yeah. He yep. formed so him and breathed into his nostrils. And Eve is the mother of all living. Yeah. So if 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 you say that's figurative, yeah, then I'm left with the question of why are we taking, why are we going to take anything else literal if that's figurative? Gotcha. Okay, sure. What's the arbiter of what becomes literal and what's figurative yeah. in that point? Genesis yeah. 126, we're all made in God's image. That's that's literal, but then everything else is figured. Yeah. How? How yeah. are you doing that? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, just, I did you have the same um the 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 more educated you became in, mm -hmm. in what you believed, and the more you studied Greek, Hebrew, did you have the same experience where like the the distance between your original faith mm. and kind of where you were right before you de deconstructed and right before you lost your faith, like the the distance that you had gone and what you believed doctrinally was there was there had you traversed a long because I had gone through the stages mm. of being more universalist and you know, battling with Calvinism and, and predestination and, and, you know, and, and oh, I've yeah. gone through all these steps and then, you know, <laughs> I, I became a much more liberal Christian and, mm -hmm. and now I'm flexible in this area on my doctrine, you know, things like that. Did oh yeah. I ran that? the gambit. I went from yeah. when I initially came in sort of like you, I was, I wasn't doing the faith healing, but I was speaking in tongues sure, and all speaking that. words of knowledge to people thinking yep, that yep, God yep. was, and even while I was doing it in my head, I was like, God, I hope I'm not lying to these people. Mm. God, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fool these people. I'm just, I hope yeah. when I'm making these syllables with my mouth, speaking in tongues, God, I hope that I feel like I'm choosing the syllables, but I hope there's something spiritual happening. Mm. Like I was having this internal dialogue. I, I thought that's weird. God. I never had that. I, mm. I, and, and whenever I was speaking in tongues, it almost mm -hmm. like I can still do it. I, I don't, mm -hmm. but I can't. <laughs> and, and it, it does kind of feel like it's mm -hmm. like just kind of coming. Like I'm not really having to think of I was much. trying to get there, but I, I was yeah, I didn't yeah. my, my level of proficiency with it gotcha, was not there. Gotcha. Um yeah. well this also came from listening to my dad do it right, from the time, yeah. you know, little bit. And in the mornings before he would preach, I you know, you'd hear him thundering through the house praying in tongues. So I mean I, I wasn't conversant up. in tongues yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, was I, I wasn't trying to fool people either. So sure. uh, but I was there, then I you know. Believing that there were demons and everything, like even my oh, childhood yeah. Yeah, toys, yeah, yeah. They, there were demons in them, and mm -hmm. threw them out. I cut off my my Hulk Hogan dolls. Hey, <laughs> like there's a demon in here. <laughs> <laughs> I threw I wasn't my... allowed. I had to sneak in, a, sneak off to watch Smurfs. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, because Gargamel, right? He was a witch. Yeah. He was, he was a wizard. Yeah, yeah. The warlock. Yeah, his name's his cat's name was Azrael, and it was you That's know it was right, a demon. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, and wasn't so. Allowed. 
Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? <laughs> and, and it's back now. They're, you know, all this, uh, they're, they're terrified that the satanic church is on the rise yeah. and, yeah. and just all that, man, everybody's the, the fear mongering. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you step away from it. Oh yeah. And you hear it again. You're like, no way I was wrapped up in that. Yeah, man. No way yeah. I was a part of that. But yeah, yeah. we were that silly. We were that yeah. silly. <laughs> so yeah. I went from that to a more, it's funny that there's a Christian version of skepticism mm. where you become skeptical of the supernatural. Yes. All in an attempt to have a more sane and sound and biblical faith. And more respectable faith, even so, you're not yeah. looked at as being so so quacky. Mm -hmm. And so I became a, a Christian skeptic of some of that stuff. But I thought I was just trying to be more biblical, right? The Bible yeah. says a, a Christian yeah. can't be demon possessed. Well, so, I think Martin Gardner, the father of skepticism, I believe. I mean, he was a Christian, and I didn't and, know that. Yeah, and he one of the things he was debunking faith healers and things like that. Right. And he said the one thing he didn't apply his skepticism to was his faith in God. And wow. uh, and he admitted that. So but, wow, yeah. I need to check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> wow, that's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I, I went from that to becoming more of a skeptical. And people like Hank Hanegraaff helped me become. If you're familiar with Hank Hanegraaff, had a program called The Bible Answer Man. Yes, you yes, could yes. call in and ask questions, and he would walk mm -hmm. you through. He he got people out of uh, the the Word of Faith movement, got people yeah. out of prosperity uh, gospel. Mm -hmm. So I went from Crap that. To dollar, being, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went from that to being more skeptical as a Christian. I, and I went from um, uh, dispensationalism to being more covenantalist. Okay. I went from being, you know, more Arminian to being more Calvinistic, though I was never a full fledged Calvinist. Yeah, I could um, never get I there went, either. I went from being, uh, from believing in inerrancy to just believing the Bible was infallible. Right. And, and that's interesting. People mm -hmm. don't realize because my parents, whenever I told them that the Bible was not infallible, they, mm -hmm. they flipped, mm -hmm. I mean, they flipped out. They were mm -hmm. just went nuts. And I was just like, you cannot tell me that you believe this thing is infallible. But what I was saying was inerrant. Right. Uh, and that's, and that's what I was taught and yeah. raised was that we yeah. believed in the inerrancy of the right. Bible, but not the infallibility and right. kind of go over the difference <laughs> between those two, because I think a lot of people get that mixed up. Yeah. So, uh, so inerrancy has been explained or, or defined with all these caveats. So it's almost like, well, when you put it that way, it's almost meaningless, but they say sure. the Bible in its original manuscripts or original autographs, which we have no access to. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, then what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the Bible exactly. in its original autographs mm -hmm. are without error in all that they intend to teach. Right. So it's almost like, well, wait, who decides what it intends to teach? <laughs> and like the statement yeah. is almost yeah. meaningless. Yes. Well, but and then, then you have to interpret it in context. Right. In context, according to the rules of, you know, history, grammar and all. Right, but yeah. infallibility is not about whether or not there's error. Infallibility is about whether or not in matters of faith or practice, it could ever steer you wrong. Infallibility right. says it cannot steer you wrong in matters of faith and practice. Gotcha. There could be errors in it. How many people were at this battle? Oh, this yep. text says 500,000. This text says 300. There could be errors. There could be, but in terms of what is trying to get you to believe and practice, it is infallible. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yep. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good uh, clarification and, and important because, well, all of these things are kind of, they get, uh, there's so much nuance whenever you really mm -hmm. start digging into what all of this is. That's that's kind of a frustrating thing that I might have you touch on is is um, being taken lightly whenever, mm -hmm. you know, like people taking your journey um, hmm. and how rigorously you investigated this. Yeah. And they and they just kind of poo poo it, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. hand wave it away and just like he didn't really take this seriously if he really considered this. And how does that feel whenever you know how seriously you believe this and how seriously you've taken this? The sad thing about being a former Christian is you have all these biblical quotes in your in your in your head. Mm, so it's like yeah. I have biblical references for everything. But there's a passage where um, it says something to the effect of uh, Jesus didn't need the praise of men because he knew what was in them. Like, yeah, I, I feel similarly like I don't need mm. you. I don't need you to believe me. Yeah. I, I know my yeah. experience. I know right. 
I know the the battles that I had with God. Mm. I know the things that I suffered because of my belief, the things that I was willing to endure because of my belief, the, the, right. the ways I was willing to trust God um, and what I was trusting God for. Mm. Um, you, you know, you, you don't know that you're not in my heart. So you would never know yeah. that. And right. I'm not going to waste my breath trying to explain that to you. But anyone who's known me, the thing that boggles their mind is how could this person not be saved because of what we yeah. know about this person? Right. Um, yeah. So and I, I don't really, I don't really pay too much attention to it, but I do That's say, good. I do say to the person who was willing to doubt my, my, my former faith though, if someone who's going through what I've gone through, because, you know, they say, well, Jesus is going to say to people, this is the verse in the Bible, right? Where Jesus yeah. supposedly said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, means they were submitted to him they called him lord yeah, yeah, did yeah. we not cast out demons in your name and prophesy in your name they had some kind of spiritual connection and he's mm -hmm. going to say to them depart from me you workers of iniquity i never knew you, never knew you. Yeah. and okay. they're like so brady brady you you could have you could have had all the experiences maybe he just never knew you and mm -hmm. i'm like okay maybe but then guess what that means you could be in the very same boat as me that's right yep anybody yep. who's going through what i've gone through if Jesus is, is real and is going to say to me, I never knew you, you have no assurance either because I've yep. had the same experiences you've had. Yep. Maybe he's going to say the same thing to you. Yep. Yeah. So really there's yeah, no I, such thing as assurance. I can't prove that what I felt and what I experienced was exactly what anyone else ever does or will. Mm. But the, the way it's explained and the way that it's uh, the other people communicate it. I see, I, I have seen no difference between my experiences and what they claim yeah. are experiences. Yeah. And now I, I, I did believe it then I don't believe it now. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, that's. But tie what you're saying into what I just said, I think it, it's something that people need to think about. You and I both deconverted. Yes. There are going to be people who stand before him who did not deconvert, who I'm not saying this, this is really going to happen, sure, but the sure. Bible says, yeah. no, I get you. Even the people who have not deconverted have no assurance. He's going to say to the people who thought right. I was still rocking with you up to the end. Yep. He's going to say, I never knew you. Yep. How do you have any assurance at all whatsoever? Yep. If that's the case. Yeah. 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 I, I remember uh, my uh, first year of Bible school, I listened to a sermon by John Bevere and mm. it was something about the fear of the Lord or something like mm. that. And I, I could not get off the floor that day. Mm. I was so depressed that mm. I, I was certain that there was no way that I could get into heaven, that, that, mm. that, that there was no way that I could believe it good enough or be good enough, according to John Bevere's standards and the <laughs> message that I had just heard, heard. I was like, you're not getting in no matter how mm. much you believe this. You're mm. not good enough and you never wow. will be. And wow. I, and I just was like, and that's what I, I just tossed it in the garbage. Like I, like the next day I was just, I threw it away and I was like, this can't be right. This can't mm. be right because, because the way it made me feel right. spiritually, you know, mm. I thought, yeah, but yeah, it, 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 you're right. When, if you really dig down to it, you can get to the place where you realize there's no assurance for anybody in this thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it absolutely. And that's why Pascal's wager is such a farce to me is just <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Mm. You, you, with all the different denominations and they don't believe right. each other are getting in. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. You, you just, it, it, they all believe in the same guy. And, mm. and, you know, I've heard my growing up, I was told Catholics aren't Christians, you know, mm. Mormons aren't Christians. I got told who was and wasn't a Christian mm. by people who also other people told me weren't Christians. So yeah. it's just, you know, it's one of those things that you're right. Once you, once you really peel back the layers, mm -hmm. there isn't any, any assurance there. There's it. I don't understand how it makes people feel any better. Yeah. 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 When, whenever you peel the layers back. But like I said, I don't think believers really think about these things too deep. Mm. I, I think we get our standard answers growing up whenever we're young. And those are the answers. And it doesn't just apply to religion. It, it applies, like I say, to even things like a globular yeah. spherical earth. Yeah. We, we get our answers and then that's it. We go down the road. Well, because you have life to live, right? That's it. Yeah. It's hard to live life when you have questions about these things. Yeah. 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 Just yeah, get your answers that, and go. 
that's why whenever people like you and p- people like myself, I'll, I'll include that whenever you do go on this journey and this thing is so important to you mm-hmm. that you dedicate all this amount of time, this is not a small thing to let go of. This is not yeah. a small, like whenever people ask you, like, why are you, why are you talking about it? If you don't believe it anymore, like what, why it was my life. Yeah. You know, I, these concepts that I think other people don't think about deeply, I did and mm-hmm. was considering deeply and cared immensely about, about the yeah. results and, and what conclusions I would have to come to if I accepted them. And so taking it seriously, I, I realize that the majority of people don't. And, mm-hmm. and that's just, that's just the case. And I think on most issues and most things uh, that we ourselves, we, we find, we care about deeply. I mean, you're, you know, music, uh, I'm sure audio, if you're listening to something and the audio is not right, I'm sure mm-hmm. it's just needles at you, needles yeah. at you. Yeah. And whereas there are other people that could listen to the same lecture or whatever. And they're like, eh, it's fine. I, you know, <laughs> it, it, you'll get, you'll get over it. Um, but I, I, you know, I play guitar and, and same thing. If something's out of, out of tune or something, mm-hmm. I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> you know? And so, and so, you know, it's yeah. the same yeah. thing with, with religion is the, you know, in philosophy and different things, when you care about it deeply, you, you know, right away, whenever something's sounding off, whenever it's wrong and you're just mm-hmm. kind of like, there's something just, it's, you know, because you're trained yourself in that area. But if you're not constantly in pursuit of these things, I mean, I remember when, when the problem of hard solipsism presented itself mm. to me and mm. I realized that I had no pathway to demonstrate mm. that I'm not a brain in a vat, you know, that I'm yeah. not that, you know, when I realized <laughs> that I, there's no mechanism, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. I had a moment where I was just like, Ooh, mm. that is, <laughs> this is uncomfortable, <laughs> you know? Um, and I just don't think, and whenever I've discussed it, even with people who are in uh, psychiatry and mental health mm. and different things, most of them have never really given serious consideration to these things, to these mm. subjects. And, and they're just, and they'll ask me like, why, why do you care so much? You know, mm. why, what, what, why do you stay up at night thinking about this stuff? I don't know. It's how I'm mm. wired. It's that's right. me. I, I can't let these things rest. If, if I get told something that I don't understand, I will stay up for days until I figure it out. <laughs> and it's just something about me. I, I, I remember whenever I was, oh, I used to be into Joe Rogan and I was listening to one of his podcasts. Mm. And uh, he said, if all the smart people die, how long would it take you to make a cell phone? Like he said, if Mm. all the smart people that know how to make shit, just they're gone tomorrow. How Mm. long would it take you to to communicate, send a message? You know, and I was like, oh, man. I <laughs> I don't even know how they work, and mm. but I did for two weeks. I went deep and just <laughs> tried to figure out how do I do this, you know. And it really those things do they bother me? And they yeah. And I think you're wired that way, or you're not, you know. And and I think with some of this stuff is that mm. you know I think a lot of people would wonder, you know, how why invest any time or energy anymore mm. once you come to the conclusion that you have really investigated this thing, and really there's no good reason to mm. stay in this camp anymore what keeps you here? You know? Yeah. And I think it is, it's just that. And I don't think there's any hopes left really of, of hearing any good arguments. I, I don't have high hopes, but I definitely never want to close myself off. Hmm. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. And yeah. I, and I think that's part of the reason why I'm still having the conversations. Hmm. So you do have these conversations frequently or I do. I have them a lot. I just haven't been public about them. Okay. And, and, you know, for a long time, this was just stuff. I, I do kind of think that whenever you do have these moments in these crises of faith, I do think you need to t- take some time and kind mm-hmm. of be quiet and, and, mm-hmm. and, and make sure that you're, th- this isn't something that you're emotionally connected to yeah. as much as, as, because like you said, you know, I think it's great what you said about, you know, people, they, they don't know you, people don't know your journey. They can think mm-hmm. whatever they want and, and try to diminish, you know, the validity of it. But at the end of the day, you know your heart, you know what you've been through, things like that. I really like what you had to say there, um, because a lot of that is why I didn't come out public mm. uh, real strong whenever I first deconstructed, was I, I wanted to take time because there, there was emotional attachment there. There was yeah. like, are you serious? Like, I've wasted this much time and energy of my life um, and, and missed opportunities, you know, different things that I I thought I would have taken, but I thought God was leading me this direction. Wow. You know, it's just yeah. so much yeah. of your life that you lose. Well, we'll see. What you just said is key. And this is why I've got to be a little more gracious with the people that I talk to. I'm always on Facebook, you know, sparking yeah. these questions, trying to get other people to think. But 
between 2014 and 2021, when I actually like started telling people, Hey, I'm not, I'm not in no more. Yep. In those six years, I took time to do the very thing that you just said. Mm. So it wasn't like I just jumped out of Christianity, even though I felt my faith fracture in an instant. Mm. I I spent three years after that, 2014 to 2017, was me trying to give God the benefit of the doubt sure. and interpret happenstance in God's favor. Anything that coincidentally looked like that could be a blessing from heaven. I was trying to give God credit. Like maybe that was God. Maybe, maybe mm. it's still true. Maybe it is. So three years of that, of just trying to see God in the world because I couldn't see him quote unquote in his word anymore. Like I literally prayed that when I graduated seminary in 2015, I said, God, I need to see you in your world because I can't see you in your word. Mm. And I went through life just trying to give God the benefit of the doubt, interpreting everything in his favor, helping as much as I could. Uh, that was God. Uh, oh, that's proof of God. Three you years. literally adopted look at the trees. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and not just look at the trees, but almost like and that tree's falling. Go prop it up. Like help, mm. help mm. the trees. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, help, help, help as much as you can. After yeah. three years of that, I realized. I said, uh, "I'm doing too much. I'm helping too much. Mm. What if I stop helping? Does does God still exist? If I stop making it look like this is a God, gotcha. Does God still exist in my in my worldview? Mm. So, I was already not reading the Bible. So yeah, stop praying." Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop. I didn't stop going to church, but I stopped just about everything outside of just going to church. I stopped doing that. And I also started sinning, quote unquote. Yeah. Like anything I could think of, like this will wake him up. Almost like there's a passage in the scripture where Elijah is battling 400 prophets of another God. Mm -hmm. And it, they they put this altar where whoever's God is the real God is supposed to come down by fire and mm -hmm. consume this sacrifice. Yep. He's like, y'all go first. Yep. The prophets of Baal, right? That's prophets right. of Baal, right? Y'all go first. And they're, they're crying out, trying to get their God to show up and do something and, and nothing ever happens. Yep. And then eventually, you know, Elijah's like, yo, let me wet. He says, okay, my yep. turn. Okay, I'll cool. The water. <laughs> wet the sacrifice. Make it yep. even harder for my God. Mm -hmm. to consume it by fire, wet it. And then his God comes through. I, I did something akin to that. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to live my most sinful best life. I'm going to see like, if I could do anything, anything at all to make God show up like, Oh, stop, stop, stop. I'm real. Or mm. come judge me. Do, do something. It, it culminated in a moment where I found myself standing in the ocean at one o'clock in the morning and I cannot swim. Cannot mm. swim. I'm standing in the ocean at Virginia beach at one o'clock in the morning and there's no one, no one around for mm. miles. And I'm walking deeper and deeper into the ocean. Not because I'm suicidal. Even though when I think back about it now, I'm like, that was suicidal. And I'm basically, because I spent the day on the beach writing I wrote a book called Let There Be Gaslight, mm -hmm. detailing why I left the faith. And it's funny what we were just talking about, because I was I started to call the book at first. It's best not to think about it. <laughs> that mm. was going to be the title at first. Mm. But I had spent the day on the beach writing. I like chapter. both the titles. I do love Let There Be Gaslight, though. That's a yeah. great title, dude. But I That's spent the day on the beach writing a chapter of that book. And then around one o'clock, I looked up and said, there's nobody else out here. And I said, wait, like. God, you see what I'm writing, right? Like you see what I'm up to here. Aren't you going to stop me? Like, are... and I just got up from my chair and I just walked into the water. I just said, like, maybe it's not easy enough for you. Maybe let me make it easier for you to stop me. Let me go out into the ocean. I can't swim. Like, <laughs> as if if there's a God, like as if as if he couldn't get me on land. Let, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me go, let me make it easier for you. I just went and stood in the ocean. Like, don't you want to stop what I'm doing? Mm. You see the way I've been living. You see what I'm up to. You know, I plan to release this book. You know, the impact that I've had, you know, the reach that I have. Stop me. 
I go stand in the ocean. And I'm like, you could Jonah me right now. You could send a whale to just come in. And I every couple of minutes, I take another step deeper into the ocean. Mm. And the water's getting higher and higher as it's coming in. I said, are you going to do anything at all? Is there anything I could do to get you to just give me some sort of sign? Mm. Like, I'll stop. I'll stop the book. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to being the, the, the Christ follower that I was for 30. Do anything. And after about maybe 10 minutes or so, just standing in the ocean and getting deeper and deeper, I said, I don't want to die out here. And I don't think you're going to do anything. And finally, I just said, oh, you're not there. <laughs> like this, who am I talking to? <laughs> I'd already been living like he was not there, but yeah. this was almost like the culmination of yeah. after six years of depression and doubt mm -hmm. and just, I said, no, this is, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. Like I'm not talking to anyone. I've been wrong for 30 years. I just mm. need to own it. I need yeah. to stop trying to give you a chance to, like you're God. If you're if you're there, you're God. You could always spark this back up. Mm. But as of where I am right now, I was wrong. That's what this is. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah. Wow. And you had, and you went through that alone. Yeah, mostly alone because yeah. I didn't want to bring anybody else down into the pit that I was in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because you know I I don't remember. Yeah, because I never went into the pit. I, mm. I it was it was slow. It was slow. Mm. Like it was a culmination. It, it was a moment where I just realized I didn't believe anymore. Mm. Um, like I say, you know, growing up, my dad, you know, he was okay with accepting evolution. He was okay with accepting an old Earth. So I already had kind of like stepping stones to accepting things. So I was constantly learning new things, updating my models and different things. And mm. but it got to a certain point to where I was starting to update my models. And like you say, some of the theology and doctrines and stuff start to fall apart with mm. what we're, what we're finding and discovering in, in reality. Mm -hmm. And, and so then I started thinking, you know, well, there's gotta be good arguments out there. I mean, there's gotta be, there's gotta be evidence out there. There wouldn't be all this, you know, mm. there wouldn't be all this information and still be believers if there weren't. Wasn't good <laughs> arguments. I yeah. know they're out there. I just haven't had to face them because I haven't, you know, I haven't dug this deep. <laughs> And mm. so I started looking for arguments mm. and every time it seemed like regardless of, of whether I was going to a, a theist channel or an atheist channel or whoever's channel I was going to, whatever debate I was listening to on the subject of a God, it seemed like the atheists won mm. And, mm. and maybe they weren't the most charismatic, but I, I took it and I started looking at the transcripts and, mm. and just, and look, and looking at what was actually said versus right who had the best stage presence or who right. was more best timing or who was more rhetorically gifted. And I'll, I'll tell you Hitchens was extremely rhetorically gifted. Mm. Um, and, and even still, if I look at some of the transcripts, there were a few times whenever I'm like, he didn't really answer that. Like mm -hmm. he, as good as he was, he got a mm -hmm. laugh, he got a clap, but mm -hmm. it didn't really address the issue. And, and, uh, you know, but he was still, I mean, he was a goat. I mean, he was yeah. awesome. Um, and, and still, I still think he won hands mm. down most of most of his debates. Um, but, you know, going and looking at that stuff, I just started to realize, wow, there really aren't very many good arguments. Mm. And and even the ones that I still to this day will say they're they're deep, they're long. You have to really be willing to sit down with a, a sandwich and, you know, several drinks because it's going to take a long time to get through them. Mm -hmm. There are a few arguments out there that hold some water They're mm -hmm. They're they're long and arduous. And if uh, God needed you to understand them to, in order for it to, to accept its existence, I think it's too complex and nobody mm. will ever get there. Uh, but I still think they're, they're not many. They're just mm -hmm. not many good arguments. I just mm. haven't found many. Um, not to say there aren't any, but there yeah. aren't many good ones. Um, has that been your experience as you've kind of. No, I've, I've interview? heard that from like, I've interviewed several people who've deconverted. Mm hmm from Christianity. And that's a very common testimony. Yeah. That you're hearing, you, you go to, I had several people who, you know, they wanted to be better apologists. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, that started, was my, that was where okay, I was yeah. going to head. Yeah. So they started watching these apologists debating 
atheists or skeptics at least mm -hmm. and they, I've, I've heard this over and over again that they found themselves being convinced by yep. the skeptic or by the atheist that was yep. not me yep. i didn't okay. know about the online atheist community i didn't know yep. about these yep. debates between christians and atheists until a month before i was ready to tell the world mm. i don't believe anymore i was already oh, i'd already wow. written my book i was already there wow you went through the whole process without the the arguments and everything that's amazing dude. but here's here's what also is amazing is when i wrote my book when i go when i went back and i started watching people like dilla or uh -huh. apologia they're saying some of the very same things that i was saying almost in the exact words and i'm sitting there wow. like wow it's like it, it it what it what it said to me was oh so there's just a common sense that you arrive at once you leave this mythical kind of thinking, yeah, like there's no way that we're going to be saying the same things in almost the exact, sometimes the exact same words. I said, yeah. this must just be common sense then, yeah. which means for all this time, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> I was living devoid of this very common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it is so, sometimes really common sense, isn't it? It, yeah. it, it is. It is. It's funny how, and, and I do really appreciate Matt, Dill um, mm -hmm. you know, he, he has a way of breaking things down in a real simplistic, yeah. you know, just like, yeah. if not X, then Y, like, honestly, what are you doing here? <laughs> and and I, it, it is nice. Uh, I met him once. He came up with uh, Eric and uh, they did a debate with uh, mm -hmm. David Woods in, in Claremore, Oklahoma. Um, mm -hmm. He wouldn't remember, but it, we, you know, we went all, we all went to dinner afterward um, mm -hmm. and he did some magic and stuff, but I really like, like mm -hmm. the, the, the no the common sense element uh, because we are really good at common sense, critical thinking, pattern seeking, uh, but mm -hmm. it also is a downfall because we are so good at it. When we do see patterns, when they're not yeah. there, we yeah. really yeah. double down on them. And yeah. uh, I think, <laughs> you know, it, it's nice to have, you know, tools like mm -hmm. and access to people like Matt and, uh, you yeah, know, for sure. reducing things down to, cause I think he does a lot of reducing it down to the laws of logic, you know, mm -hmm. the, the uh, absolutes as some people call mm -hmm. them a law of identity excluded middle non-contradiction and a lot of times it just just those three just applying those to to yeah. any claim is pretty much all you need yeah um and and you may not be able to uh verbalize it or whatever the way that you can or the way matt can uh but like you say that common sense is is in applying that to every claim yeah and not reserving just special special claims get special treatment well, like you, like you said, even if the founder of skepticism, or at least the first mm -hmm. articulator of the of the idea, yeah. if he says, "I don't apply this to my belief in God," like, why yep. not? You yeah. know, why yeah. not? Yeah. Uh, the presuppositionalist will say, <laughs> the presuppositionalist will say, you can apply that to your concept of God because it's only by God that these things become in intelligible. Yeah. But I cannot, I cannot wait to talk to some of these presuppositionalists when I'm. They they irk my, my soul a little bit because I think it's a mm. dishonest way to to reason. Yeah. But um, to answer your, your 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 question about my process, it wasn't going to seeing these skeptics or atheists and theists debate that helped me. Mm. It was when I went to the theists, Christians, mm -hmm. for help understanding whether or not there's anything to the argument of right. evolution by common descent. Right. Yeah. And when I started going to Christians who were willing to admit there's something there, because I had always heard the Christian apologists say, there's no there there. Right. Yeah. These That's are what just... Tim said too. He had the same issue with cosmology and he contacted answers in Genesis. And he said, man, they just, their answers were just not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, that was it wasn't that the answers were not good for me. Prior to my investigation, I always accepted the answers. Okay. So maybe there were some things I didn't understand. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm like, okay, so you guys are thinking through this. You guys are okay. Ken Ham, even though I think Ken Ham didn't do such a great job against Bill Nye in the debate, I was like, yeah, but he's on my team, so I'll I'll root for him anyway. Sure. But once I started doing my research and I started finding Christians who were saying no common descent is actually real. The Christian geneticists who were saying population genetics rules out an Adam and Eve. Mm. I said, okay, in this thought experiment, the people who have the most, 
who have the most reason to be biased against evolution, they're now starting to say evolution by common descent mm. is is true. Yeah. If they're saying it, even though there's still Christians who deny it, we got now we have Christians who are saying, hey, we've been in the lab. Mm-hmm. This is this is real. Right. Your Francis Collins and your uh, Dennis Venomas and those kind of guys. Right. It was when they started saying there's a there there. That's when I started saying, okay, I, now I need to really figure out what am I going to do? Gotcha. Because you can't claim bias anymore. You can't claim right. it's just these evil atheists looking for a, a reason or a way to get God out the picture. Yeah, they don't right. want God's yeah. authority. They don't want God. And so, no. no, these are people who still live under God's authority who still mm-hmm. try to make the Bible be true as much as they can. They, and they're saying that evolution is, that's mm-hmm. when I said, okay, now, now the jig is up. Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, man. So career path, you were headed mm-hmm. to, you were going to be an edu- instructor, uh, probably a uh, full-time ministry of some sort and or education. it was full-time ministry that didn't look like ministry. So my whole right. thing was yeah. find a way to be in ministry that and things like that. Right. So I was teaching at four schools, two Christian schools and two uh, secular schools. Okay. Yep. Um, I stopped teaching at the Christian schools. Mm-hmm. I still teach at the community college of Philadelphia. Okay, cool. Um, I'm still teaching my uh, hip hop history and ethics course. Okay. I am right now going through the process through through, through the process of reconfiguring the ethics portion of the course. Okay, sure. Because the ethics portion of the course was course was designed to sort of lead people towards deontological ethics, divine command, and just sort of you know the whole course was designed in a very clever way Mm. to raise the kind of questions that would kind of get them to ask questions. That would allow me to give Christian answers. Gotcha. And I'm only giving it because you asked, Mm. but you only asked because I led you to ask. Mm. Um, That's the way the course was designed. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. I teach an ethics course for mental health uh, Mm. professionals and, uh, so you can see how you could, you could do that, right? You could could design it to. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's very clever (laughs) because, because uh, you're the authority on ethics. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm having to redesign that portion okay. of the course because I'm now, now I'm not trying to steer you towards deontological ethics as much as I'm trying to steer you towards um, what I would call a more humanistic mm. understanding of ethics. Don't you don't you find though that genuinely, generally, our ethics are humanistic. Our our morals, our ethics, yeah. they're they're, hum- yeah. they're humanistic. They're se- they're secular, and, and and for the most part, I I don't function much less uh like i did whenever i was a believer i for the most part most things are pretty much the same my morals well, and ethics yeah and here's why though the bible's ethics are also humanistic it's right. just that they put Derived them in the mouth us. of their god right and you can tell that they're humanistic because sometimes their god is saying things that only favor certain humans yep it only favors yep. men it yep. only favors israelites it only you know what i mean like yep you, you can treat and it's you authoritative can, i mean you exactly. can't argue with this this uh, deity, uh, which is divine, divine command, right? Is mm-hmm. like whatever that d- deity says is good and moral is good and moral, right? And it, 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 there's no counter to it because that being is good and moral. Uh, but yeah, if you pay attention, a, though, as as the Bible progresses, those divine commands progress along with human history. Mm-hmm. So it, it sort of shows you just how, even if not humanistic, how human it is. Yeah. Yeah. But it does become more humanist when you think about, oh, now if somebody's a slave, you should set that person free, you know, yeah. Philemon. And now you get into um yeah. so the 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 morals progress because humanity progresses. Mm-hmm. Um so anyway, I say that to say yeah. and Philemon, um, he actually doesn't even want him freed because slaves should be freed. He wants him freed right. because he's because he's friend. a brother, <laughs> right? He's yeah. a Christian yeah. brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it has know. nothing to do with the fact that slavery is bad. <laughs> it's just like, come on, he's our buddy. Right. <laughs> you shouldn't own him. He's yeah. one of the boys. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway, I say that to say, um, 
my my career path is I'm still there, but at, at times this may be one for the theist because mm. at times I'm like, I was only in that job because it was a, it was a humanitarian missions effort. Yeah. It was a, it was a evangelistic missions effort yeah. that was cloaked as a humanitarian missions effort. Right. Now so that I don't have that. It. Yeah. Now that I don't have that impetus anymore. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Now, I don't know now if I still want to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But I, I, but I'm still there. I mean, my city is going through a lot of turmoil. Like there's a lot of, gang mm. activity in my city now i, I still want to be oh, a a voice for change yeah but at the same time i'm like yeah you know i could go and do something else um sure. i also i mean i have ventured into other career paths that I, I i don't speak about just because i think if my christian community knew what i was doing they'd be like oh you just wanted to sin that's why you left the faith but i'm like no, I, I need money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and these are, there are other things that I'm doing now that I just, as a Christian, I would have never thought that I could be doing these things. It, um, it is mind blowing to Christians when you, when, because sin for us was such a, I guess, just a, a given once it once mm. it, well, that's, you can't do that because that's sin. Right. But then whenever, <laughs> whenever you stop accepting that sin is a thing. Right. It, it, <laughs> it, I, I've seen people just like, they, they, they go, hey, what? They, they just mm. have a glitch whenever they're like, yeah. well, that's sin. And I go, well, I don't, I don't believe in sin. Uh, and so I don't right. care. And right. they're just like, but, but what? Like, how can you not believe in sin? It is, it's, yeah. it's sin. And, you know, and it's, it's weird, right? Like yeah. now having to recondition your mind where it's just like it, but it's, you know, I don't think that way anymore. You know, yeah. like whenever somebody tells me they're doing something that back in the day would be considered right. sin. Right. I don't even have a like a a wince. You know, mm. I remember those first few years uh, <laughs> when I would see I would see two men kiss or mm -hmm. something. You know, and I would just be like, I'd have this. Ugh, like that's, <laughs> that's not natural. And now, you know, now it's just like I watch. You know, it happens. Yeah. And my my son is sitting right there with me. There's no weirdness. Uh, anything. It's just like no. Nah, it's just that right. love is love. It's not a big right. deal. You know. And and now you know going from that switching from that. that yeah. You know. It's just, yeah. You know. It's it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, obviously I would love is love whenever it's, it's legal consent, you know, right. things like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But, uh, but, but, uh, yeah. So I, I think, you know, looking back on what I used to think was sin and stuff now, it's just so like, yeah, I, I, I can't even, I can't even get there anymore, you know, mm. like, but, but I do know that it, we, there is part of like, you know, this is a testimony now too, having come out of being in ministry and being, uh, you know, and so if people do get this, you know, we play into their preconceived notions anytime we do anything like I'll, I, I drink whiskey every once in a while. Now I don't have a problem mm. with it. I know that that's going to leave open a door that uh, theist mm. is going to be like, well, yeah, you just wanted to drink. That's why, <laughs> that's why you went down that path. It's like, mm. no, I now know that I can drink and it's not a big deal. It, right. it is not what, why I did anything. Right. I just now know it isn't a big deal. And right. so that's kind of how I, but I do know we leave ourselves open to, to undo criticisms, but you're going to get undue criticisms for anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it yeah. is just like, it's going to happen. So, and, and I'm trying to wrestle through that now because I'm like, one of the things I hate about being in the space that I'm in now is I almost can't talk about certain parts of my life because mm -hmm. rather than they, rather than them being accepted, it becomes a, that's a mark against your worldview yep. now because you're doing yep. the thing that we consider sin. Right. Like, so now I've got to, I've got to pretend to be just as uh, puritanical as I was when I was a believer, because right. anything short of that, now the argument changes from my, my real reasons for unbelief yep. to, Oh, you just wanted to do X, Y, and Z. Yep. I hate that about where I am right now. Yeah. 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 The no true Scotsman, all this stuff yeah. is like, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is when you, when they have in the, in the chamber, you know, uh, the fool has said in their heart, there is no God you're, you're dismissed <laughs> from, the, from the get. I mean, yeah. they, they'll sit there and try to reason with you. And whenever they find out that there is no, that, that mm. they don't have good reason and that you mm. have thought about these things, mm. it's, it, you will be dismissed no matter what it wouldn't yeah. matter. It wouldn't matter if it's your lifestyle or if it's just the fact <laughs> That you're right. the fool that is said in their heart. <laughs> no God. But yeah, man, sure. <laughs> I really appreciate you being here with me. I want to respect your time. We've been going for almost an hour and a half. Okay. And I want to let you get your Saturday uh, 
and and my kid has already peeked in on me. I know <laughs> he wants some food. So, man, right. I I really appreciate you being here. Is there where do we find you? How can we help with, with whatever you're doing? Uh, you can check out. I have a podcast on uh, YouTube called Icapod. I C H A P O D. Me and some friends, both of them are both uh, former believers. Um, we just think back through our faith, things that we yeah. we should have seen that we didn't see. That yeah. now we're like, hey, remember this? That should have tipped us off that this was not true. Um, okay. So yeah. we do that. Um, I have a book. Let there you be do that live, like live, live chat. No, nothing like live yet. We okay. we pre-record right. them. Uh, we put okay. them up maybe once a week, but I may start getting into some lives. Yeah. Um, I've heard the super chats are, are good for, you know, for making money. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're getting to the point I can monetize the channel now. I just got over a thousand subs so I could do that. Um, awesome. Yeah. So there's that, the book, Let There Be Gaslight. Other than that, I'm not sure. Um, I'm on Facebook causing trouble there. Just asking believers to think about <laughs> I'll share I'll share your profiles for Facebook, YouTube, and I'll share a link for the book. Oh, cool. Uh, Good stuff. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, just live life. Let's uh let's just be better to each other and see where that gets us. Uh I'm interested in that process. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate you, man. I appreciate this platform. Absolutely. You might Thank see you. me snagging like uh two minute clips of it to post on my Absolutely. Facebook because I think yeah. you said some some things that I want my Facebook crowd to mm. think about. And there's some things that I said here that I haven't said on other podcasts. That I want them to cool. think about, but uh, tagging them that. back to to go check absolutely, out the full absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm happy yeah. to share the uh, the file with you. However you want to do it, you go nuts, man. Gus, I appreciate that, man. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. I appreciate you. Have a great day, man. All right, you sir. Peace.